The Stone Child, an Inuit story by Clarissa Pinkola Esses. There was an orphan that was so lonely and so hungry that no one wanted to be near him. His mouth was open all the time, and his teeth were always showing, and tears were always running down from his eyes. And he was so wild with hunger that they had to tie him in the entrance to one of the skin houses, so he'd not try to eat the hunters on their way to the seal hunt. That's how hungry he was. They would, on occasion, leave him some rancid reindeer meat or maybe some spoiled intestines to eat. But, as we know, it was more than hunger that was gnawing at him. Those deep needs that not even the person themselves understands. So every day he stretched his chain a little bit and a little bit more until he could get near a stone that was more or less the same size as himself. You see, his mother and father had died one night and their bodies had been dragged off by bears. And all that had been left behind by them was this one particular stone. So he wrapped both his arms and his legs around that rock, and he wouldn't let go of it. And, of course, his people thought he was crazier than ever. And on their way home from the hunt, with animal carcasses slung over their shoulders, they would jeer at him, and they would say, Analuk has taken a stone for a wife. It's good for you to have a wife who is a stone, for then you cannot use your hunger and eat her. And they went on their way. But the boy was so lonely and so hungry that he really had reached the end of his feeling for life. And even though he had that terrible loneliness and that gnawing hunger, he kept his body wrapped around that stone. And because the stone began to take the heat from his flesh, the boy began to die. The stone took the heat from his hands, and then it took the heat from his thighs. And it even took the heat from his chin, where he rested it on top of the stone. And just as the boy was living his last breath, the hunters of his village came by again on their way home from the hunt. And again, they called him down, and they said, You crazy boy, you are nesting with that stone like it is an egg. We should call you bird boy, you good-for-nothing creature. And because the boy was near death, his feelings were hurt more than he could ever say. And great icy tears began to roll down his face and across his parka, and his cold, Cold tears hit the hot, hot stone with a sizzle and a hiss and a crack, and it broke the stone right in two. And inside was the most perfect little female the boy could ever want. Come, I am here now. You are an orphan no more. And she gave him a bow, and arrows, and a harpoon she had brought with her. And the boy and the girl made their house, and had babies. And, if they are not yet dead, they are in that land where the snow is violet and the night sky is black. They are there, living still. <laughs>